Hello everyone! Just to make it clear at the start, we're not actually talking about Shadowlands development for the Scarlets. This is not spoiler territory. This upcoming information has apparently been data mined all the way back in patch 8.1.5, but only recently came to the surface. At least I wasn't aware of it, which means that I'm very excited and it's time to share. In Tedesfall Glades, after talking to Zidormi and putting the zone back in time before the battle at Lordaeron, Head on over to the Calston Estate, the place where we saw the meeting between Lillian Voss, Kalia Menefil and Derek Proudmore. Over at the trees, there are a couple of pamphlets to pick up that spin some interesting tales. Let's go over them. The Traitor King, the current King of Stormwind, pretends that he represents our interests, that he cares about us, but he does not. Enduin Rin is unworthy of his name and heritage. He cares more about the undead than his living subjects. He has betrayed us all. He was the boy king who conspired with Sylvanas Windrunner to forge a pact between humans and undeads. The meeting in the Arafi Highlands was a staged event to drum up sympathy for his cause. You have heard stories that the so-called Forsaken were killed by the Banshee. False. There was no massacre, but Enduin wants you to believe there was. Why the deception? Because he wants us to feel sorry for those monsters. To welcome them back into our lives. To give up the lands that we fought so hard to hold on to. Lordaeron belongs to the living. It is our legacy. Do not be tricked by the false king. The Scarlet Brotherhood must bring an end to Enduin's puppet reign. Unite and rise up against this treachery. The would-be queen. We all know that Terranis Menefil was the last true liege of Lordaeron. In fact, he was the last great king in all of Azeroth. Sadly, he was murdered by his son who had become obsessed with undeath. The same prince who slaughtered so many of our loved ones and raised them up as monsters. Yet, we clung to one hope for the Menefil dynasty to live on. Princess Kalia, the last living heir of King Terranis. Sadly. That hope has been taken away from us by a dark conspiracy, led by one of her own. Though she was serving as a humble priestess, Kalia Menefil was destined to reign in Lordaeron one day. The people of this great land would have risen up and helped her fight for the throne. And Nguyenrin knew this. He feared such a challenge to his reign, so he set about to bring her down. The boy king conspired with the banshee herself to arrange a meeting between the living and the dead under a false flag of truce. Traitor Rin seduced the Banshee into staging a fake massacre to lure out the good-hearted Princess Kalia. Then the Traitor King had our princess murdered. But that was not the end of Enduin's foul scheme. No, he had his Banshee lover. <laughs> Raise Kalia as a lich practically spitting on the grave of good King Terranus. Why? Because the Trader King is obsessed with the dead. He plans to marry Kalia and secure his right to the throne of Lordaeron, but the Scarlet Brotherhood will not allow this to happen. We will bring down the Trader King and his undead puppets. With tears in our eyes, we will burn the corpse of Princess Kalia. Upon her ashes, Lordaeron will return to greatness. The Cursed Old Wolf We all know that Enduin Rin is a traitor to his race and he does not deserve to be king. These facts are indisputable, so who should be king? For now, there is only one answer, Gen Greymane. Yes, we must rally behind a shape-shifting monster, cursed by a night elf plague to spend half his life as a beast. Why? Because for all his many flaws, Greymane hates the Forsaken. He wants the Banshee dead, his goals align with ours, and he has the forces to get the job done. But do not worry, brothers and sisters, Greymane is not a long-term solution. We will follow him only until the undead are wiped out. Then we will bring down Greymane and turn our blades upon the rest of his cursed kind. It will be a challenge to hide your disdain for the mongrel worgen. But we must do it for a time, brothers and sisters. Once Lordaeron is free of undead filth, the Scarlet Brotherhood will finish the job and ensure that only pure-blooded humans hold this land. The Last Menefil 
knowing that our dear Princess Kalia was assassinated by Traitor Rin. And races on deaths is a pang in our hearts, brothers and sisters. But do not lose hope. King Ternus' dynasty will yet live on. It was a well-guarded secret that during the late days of her father's reign, Princess Kalia wed a nobleman of the Arafi bloodline. The prideful Arthas demanded that this truth remain hidden until he himself had wed and sired an heir. Of course, that never came to be. But a child was indeed born. Princess Kalia gave birth to a son. Yes, an heir to the Menethil throne. Sadly, the princess was separated from her husband and child during a scourge attack. Her family was presumed dead, but let joy fill your hearts, friends, for the child was saved. The young prince was rescued by a good-hearted citizen of Lordaeron. He has been kept sheltered and safe all these years by members of the Scarlet Brotherhood. We have him in a secure location that must, for obvious reasons, remain secret. We had intended to reunite the young heir with his mother. Sadly... The traitor king of the Alliance had Princess Kalia murdered by his banshee lover. The abomination that now walks this land is not Princess Kalia. Retribution will fall upon all these monsters. Lord Ron is for the living. Let hope rise in your hearts, brothers and sisters. Once we have purged the undead filth and the cursed worgen from our homeland, the young king will be revealed. The traitor Rin will be exposed and our true king will take the throne. The Menefield dynasty will be restored. And there you go. A little bit of lore kindly handed out by the Scarlet Brotherhood. Those of you familiar with the story, you might have, you know, raised your eyebrows a couple of times as this is... It's called fake news. This is Scarlet propaganda. Perhaps Anduin seducing the Banshee Queen, turning her into his lover is a dead giveaway. But let's do a little bit of fact checking. It was the boy king who conspired with Sylvanas Windrunner to forge a pact between humans and undead. Notice how they once again use the title of boy king for Anduin. The whispers of Ilgunov, they mentioned the boy king offering free lies. I still haven't been able to pin them down, but to this piece of fiction, this is actually true. In the novel Before the Storm, he does work towards a meeting between human and forsaken, reunite lost loved ones, a meeting that ended in disaster. The meeting in the Arafi Highlands was a staged event to drum up sympathy for his cause. You've heard stories that the so-called Forsaken were killed by the Banshee. False. There was no massacre, but Anduin wants you to believe there was. During the meeting between the Forsaken and the humans, the living and the undead, they had such a great time that they did not want this day, this meeting to end. They didn't want to abandon their families to go back to the Undercity. So when they noticed that Kalia Menefil was one of the priests that were overseeing the meeting, making sure that everything was going right, they called out to her. They asked her to stand with them, and she decided to do so, rallying them to run back to the Alliance. Some of them followed, others just wanted to simply go back home to the beloved Banshee Queen. Neither made it though, as Sylvanas took the field and shot down every single one of her people, even Kalia, as she wasn't part of the Alliance. While being smart enough to not create any casualties on the Alliance side, this way the war wasn't started quite yet. So the massacre did indeed happen. If you want proof, just go to the Arafi Highlands, you can still find the graves. Kalia Menethil was destined to reign in Lordaeron one day. Debatable on this part, as part of the reasoning that she gives for doing something as stupid as rallying the Forsaken to then abandon Sylvanas during the meeting, that was because I was never taught how to rule Anduin, because no one expected me to. I never formally studied politics or strategy, so when I got out there, you just followed your heart. Then the traitor king had our princess murdered. But that was not the end of Anduin's foul scheme. No, he had his banshee lover. <laughs> Raise, sorry, I can't get over that bit. His banshee lover. Raise Kalia as a lich, practically spitting on the grave of good King Terranus. Why? Because the traitor king is obsessed with the dead. He plans to marry Kalia and secure his right to the throne of Lord Ron. I, uh, I, I don't even know where to begin with this one. I love the fan art that's gonna come out of this with Anduin and Sylvanas being his banshee lover. Oh, uh, I just did a quick Google search. Never mind, that of course already exists. Kalia was not raised as a lich, nor was she raised by Sylvanas. 
Her body, after shutdown, was brought back by Anduin to the Netherlight Temple, which is the Priest Order Hall, where Anduin, together with Alonsus Val and the Naru Sa'ara, they did the little ritual, brought Kalia back, not as a forsaken or a scourge or a lich. She's become something quite new entirely. Now that whole wedding bit is really interesting though, as before the storm, it did deal quite a bit with Anduin's heritage. Uncle Greymane, he's pushing him to start working on a family, but Kalia or the throne of Lordaeron were not really on the table. It was a well-guarded secret that during the late days of her father's reign, Princess Kalia was a nobleman of the Arafi bloodline. The best lies are sprinkled with a bit of truth. Kalia was married in secret, but not to a nobleman of the Arafi bloodline. She fell in love with one of the footmen, someone that her father would never have approved of. If it had been a nobleman of the Arafi bloodline, then there wouldn't have been any problems to keep it a secret to begin with. But in the case of the Scarlets, like they're most likely planning to have this child that is in their possession. They're most likely planning to have that child take over the throne, right? Let's make that claim as strong as possible. Someone from the Arafi bloodline that's like high standing. Let's make it as strong as possible. That's also why they say that it's a son and not a daughter. That way, they have a strong claim to the throne. The prideful Arthas demanded that this truth remain hidden, until he himself had wet and sighed an heir. Of course, that never came to be, but a child was indeed born. Princess Kalia gave birth to a son, yes, an heir to the Menifil throne. A segment taken from before the storm. When I was certain that I was carrying, I confided my love for the footman to my mother. She was furious, but she could tell by my face that this was a true love, and I assured her my child would be legitimate. Father was too caught up in Arthas to make much objection, when my mother and I went on a long rest to more remote parts of the kingdom. I got to hold my beautiful little girl and tend to her for a few weeks, before it was decided that my husband would raise her away from Lord Ron and ignorant of her birthright. Mother promised that when the time was right, when Arthas had finally married and produced an heir, we could acknowledge my daughter and perhaps elevate my husband to a nobleman's status so that her name would be unsullied. That day never came, but the scourge did. From Kalia's own mouth, she had a daughter, but again, scarlet propaganda. Either they believed that it would be easier for the people to swallow a male heir to take the throne, or that's simply who they want the throne to take, whoever it might be. Sadly, the princess was separated from her husband and child during a scourge attack. Her family was presumed dead, but let joy fill your hearts, friends, for the child was saved. The young prince was rescued by a good-hearted citizen of Lord Ron. The fate of her husband and child is actually unknown at this point in time, which makes this plot, this scheme, all the more interesting. Kalia doesn't remember much about the time in which the scourge came. She knew that she was lying in a ditch while the scourge passed above her, slowly making her way to South Shore, where her husband and child had been hidden away. A sweet reunion as the three of them wept, but it was not to last. No one recognized her, since everyone assumed her to be dead. For a time, they were happy in South Shore, and then came the blight. We ran. I wasn't about to leave my family again, but in the crowd we were separated. I stood in the middle of the street, screaming for them. Someone took pity on me, pulling me onto his horse and galloping past the limits of the town, barely in time. So many of us waited, desperate for word of our loved ones. Sometimes prayers were answered, but Kalia never saw her family again. It might be that they're part of the Forsaken, they might still be out there in the world somewhere, it is unknown. But then of course the question, what is the point of all of this? Why are they handing out pamphlets? What can we learn? Well, one thing that definitely stands out is that the Scarlets are still not done. We tried to get rid of them in Classic. The Lich King had a swing at it with Ralph the Lich King. Lily and Voss had a go. Time and time again, the Scarlets, they just keep on coming back. Still center their eyes on reclaiming Lord Ron. This time by planting their own heir to the throne. We might look at this like topside view, right? And we can grab the ancient text from the books and disprove what they're saying. But for the people in Azeroth, they don't have that luxury. They only hear rumors about things that happen in the world. The stories told by the Scarlets, they do contain a grain of truth, which, you know, the best lies are built upon. If they can manage to sway the minds and hearts of the people to turn against Anduin and Kalia, that is a very powerful tool at their disposal. Infiltrating civilizations, turning them against each other, it has Dreadlord written all over it, which the Scarlets, they have a massive history with. 
being infiltrated by the dreadlord Belnazar, who pretended to be Sade and Dafrohan, that is part of the reason why they exist, why they're so zealous, and from certain point of views, why they're so corrupt. It's no spoiler to say that the Shadowlands is going to deal with the Lich King. And what better Dreadlord to make a return in that storyline than the one and only Melganus. You hear the voice of the Dark Lord. Last we really saw of him was during Wrath the Lich King, where he simply left us behind. He told us that we would never be able to take care of Arthas without his aid, but we proved him wrong. Nothing much with him after that, until the expansion Legion, with a very small cameo, being part of the demons that popped up on the broken shore, I would love to see Melganus just play a part, a little part in this expansion, have him be part of the Scarlet Brotherhood, would be so very cool. But what could that part be? Well, like I said, these stories, they could have some massive effects on the people, as well as maybe Greymane. Peace may be on the table today, but soon enough, the Horde will sound their drums and march for war. When that day comes, no scrap of parchment will hold them back. Both he and Tyrande, they're on a war mission. And while Varian, he played a big part in the return of the Gilneans to the Alliance, Anduin does not have that kind of connection. As Silvana said, the respect that the others give him, it's a courtesy, not an obligation. Meaning that Greymane, he might feel more loyalty towards Tyrande and the Night Elves now, those that offer them aid when no one else did. Help them master their Worgen curse and regain their humanity. If the choice is going to become either stick with Anduin and try to go for peace, or follow Tyrande on her path of war, combined with these Scarlets offering their aid, I wonder if Greymane would take the opportunity. Lordaeron is seemingly abandoned for the moment, but perhaps they could find a way to cleanse and fix up the land, actually have something worthy to fight over. We'd see characters like Kalia herself show up, trying to go against this propaganda, right? Tell the real story of the events. Lillian Voss, with connections to the Scarlet Crusade herself, setting up this meeting for the recently resurrected. Then on the other side, there would be the Scarlet Brotherhood, which produces their prodigy child to take the throne of Lordaeron. Melganus perhaps, taking a stab at the Menefil family again. Greymane, deciding to go on his own path of war, throwing in his force with the Scarlets. Or maybe just make it look like that way. And then he just turns around and he's like, what do you mean, mongrel worgen? We are Gilneas. We are the Alliance. For Azeroth and just, you know, starts fighting these Scarlets. Let's just say that this very small bit of lore that popped up around these trees, it could lead to a lot of cool storytelling. Or maybe it's going to lead to nothing at all. Maybe it's just a little Game of Thrones reference. Who knows? For now, you're up to speed with a nice and juicy lore bit. How would you like to see the Scarlet story play out? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time. See ya!